Hello everybody. Okay, moving on to our next subject on the link series is CAN and well, in this case OBD2. So the customer's opted to have an OBD2 port attached to his harness and he's using that to be able to uh, retrieve data from the ECU to display on like a tablet or um, anything of your choice really. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the help section. And again, super useful tool. Always refer back to it. It usually has everything you need to know in it. So under communication wiring, we've got CAN bus wiring. I'm just going to open this up and I'm going to give you a very brief explanation of CAN. So basically it's a communication protocol and it has it means you have the ability for different devices to be linked on a CAN bus. So this little twisted pair wire, that's what's called a CAN bus. You need a 120 ohm resistor on either end to terminate the CAN bus. So if you've heard the expression of terminating your CAN bus, uh, that's basically what they mean. And um, in this particular case, we're using the CAN bus to transmit OBD2 data. Uh, but to give you another example on um, a vehicle, what you might have is you've got your ECU and you want to use a link CAN Lambda. So effectively, you'd connect the CAN bus to the CAN Lambda. The CAN Lambda would then communicate the data to the ECU, giving you your air fuel ratio. So that's a basic example. More complex examples and the reason why this is becoming more popular uh, if you take a, let's say you've got a drift vehicle and you've got three fuel pumps in the back because you've got a thousand horsepower motor, you've got your radiator in the back and you've got two very nice fans on that and you've got brake lights and let's say a fog light if it's a race car that you need to have working. Now in the olden days you'd have your fuse box and that would probably be at the front of the vehicle whether that be in the engine bay or whether that be in the passenger footwell now you'd have to run individual wires along the whole length of the vehicle in order to power those particular objects okay nowadays what you can do is you can have a pdm at the rear that's a power distribution module uh, basically it's a effectively an smart relays or solid state relays that are controlled by a computer and you can power anything you want. So to give you a prime example, you've got your vehicle, you've got three fuel pumps in the back, you've got two radiator fans, you've got your brake lights, you've got your indicators because you still like to go for a drive on a Sunday. So what you could do is put a PDM at the back and what you can do is power all of the devices that you need to from there. And what you can do is just run a singular CAN bus, so just two twisted 22 gauge wires all the way to the front into the ECU and you can send the commands for things like the fuel pumps to come on. Um, and then you can also have a PDM at the front of the vehicle and that could power things like your headlights, your entire engine, so injectors, coils, etc. That can also be linked into the same CAN bus and then you can control all of that from there and you can put, say, a set of CAN bus buttons on there and you can obviously program those buttons to do whatever you wanted. So you could have the fans come on with a button, you could have that, but instead of having a whole bunch of wires running down there creating this massive thick heavy harness you would effectively have your two twisted CAN bus wires running from front to rear at the rear you would then have just a main power to your PDM and you would have an earth to each individual device which you could terminate directly at the device to the chassis so as you could see this does save a lot of wiring which is why it's quite useful um, it's not going to be for everybody. Not everybody's use case is going to require that. But yeah, you can see when it starts to get more advanced and you have a lot more devices, it's a hell of a lot easier. The other benefit from things like CAN Lambda, for instance, is if you use, um, let's say you've got an AEM wideband controller with a little gauge on there and now you want to feed the 0 to 5 volt signal. If you connect the ground from the AEM to say the chassis behind the dash and you've got your ECU connected to the actual engine block which is connected by another cable to the chassis, what you can end up with is ground loops. Those ground loops can cause fluctuations in the reading. And if you use a CAN Lambda device, obviously all of the data translation from the wideband sensor is taken care of inside the actual device itself. So the data you get back to the ECU via CAN is accurate. So again, that's another good use case for that. So I'm going to leave that there. Very brief explanation of CAN bus. Again, you can read through this. It gives you a lot more information and there is a lot more CAN information in there. And I do suggest if it's something that you want to look into, then I would say HPA Academy has a very, very good video. It's one of their training courses, so I would recommend that. Okay, so now in this particular case, what we wanted to do is we wanted to do ECU to OBD2 port wiring. So OBD2, as you know, is a 
standardized communication system. It means that you can buy one OBD2 device and you could plug it into your Golf, into your BMW, into your Nissan, into your Toyota, and you can read data from there. So the pinouts are readily available on the internet. You can Google OBD2 pinout. It'll tell you exactly what each and every pin does. In our particular case, obviously, we're just using a very limited number. Effectively, you've got 16. Pin 16 is your battery 12 volt supply. So normally you would give this a permanent 12 volt supply which we've done in our particular case here and the reason is you don't want the device you're connecting to to switch off every time you turn the ignition off because then you've got to reconnect and it's tiresome all right and obviously we're only using can high and can low so you can see it's twisted from there and we're using the two grounds four and five all right so it's very simple wiring nothing too complicated for that and what we'll do now is we're going to go into the search function. So this is also a good thing on the help section. You can go and search exactly what you want. So we're going to search OBD. And if I open that up there, you'll see it goes into much more detail about the OBD2 diagnostics. It tells you there what um, sort of speed to put it at. So obviously CAN has different speeds. Most of the modern stuff like your dashes and all of that would operate at 1,000 uh, kilobits or 1 megabit per second. Um, OBD2 does travel at a, or it does go at a little bit slower speed, so 500 kilobits. Now, you can set it, like I said, in there it says between 250 or 500. It's usually 500 kilobits. Now, one thing to remember with CAN buses is that, that all the devices on the CAN bus need to be communicating at the same speed. Now, luckily on the extreme, you actually have two CAN buses that you can operate from. But if you have one CAN bus and you decide that you want to use a CAN Lambda, that's going to communicate at one megabit per second instead of 500 kilobits per second. And therefore, you can't have an OBD2 and the CAN Lambda on the same CAN bus. In our case, we've got an extreme, so we can put an OBD2 on one of the CAN buses and we can leave the other one open if the customer ever wants to expand and add dashes, etc., onto the system over there. Okay, so effectively, it's quite easy to set up. Um, it's not too difficult, so I'm just gonna quickly minimize this and you can see we're gonna go through this particular setup over there. So when you're in the software, you're gonna go to ECU controls, you're gonna go to CAN setup, now what you want to do is under mode, you want to pick the particular one that you're working with. In our case, we want to use CAN1. You'll see normally it says that it is off, okay? If it's off, obviously nothing is going to transmit. So you do want to have it as being on. Now from the drop down list, you'll see that there's quite a selection of different vehicles. The reason is, is that Link have actually done a bunch of CAN translation for different vehicles. So you can hook the ECU up into the vehicle. You can activate it from here, select your particular vehicle, and then it'll transmit all the data over CAN that the vehicle needs for things like dashes, etc., to work. So because we're just doing OBD2, we just want to choose user defined. We want to set the bit rate. So as we know, for the time being, we're going to go 500 kilobits because that's usually what an OBD2 port communicates at. And effectively, what you're going to do here is you've got OBD on the side and you're going to choose ISO CAN 1 if it's CAN 1, which in our case it is. If you wired it up to CAN 2, then you would change that to CAN 2. Okay, so in this case, our CAN 2 is open. So if this vehicle was, let's say, a uh, right, Nissan 350Z, so I could effectively do that. You'll see that disappears because they've already known exactly what um, CAN data needs to transmit. So you don't have the option of changing that. So in this case, I'm just going to turn that off, go to CAN1, user defined so it turns on 500 bit kilobit rate, and we know that the OBD2 OBD is on CAN1. Then you just click apply, and you click OK. And it'll save it into the ECU. So that's literally it. It's, literally, it's as simple as that. So that is how you set it up. And... I've just given a brief explanation of CAN, so please, it's not extensive. Uh, if you do want to know more about the subject, again, I will advise the HPA course is incredibly good and it's very detailed. It goes through a lot of subjects, etc. how to understand CAN, how to translate it, how to actually look for CAN data from your vehicle if you want to do that. And just so that you're aware, on the Link ECU, you do actually have the ability to completely write your own CAN. So you can actually go in, you can choose your streams, you can add your frames, you can so on, you can put all the data in. And so, so I'm not going to go into detail about that because that's quite a complex subject. But if you, if you ever get to that stage, do realize with the link, you do have the ability to write all of your own CAN data that you can actually output to the ECU. So 
Hopefully that's helpful. Uh, it is very short. It's not very complicated to set up the OBD2. Do make sure that you go through the help section before you um, a, a attempt to do something like this. Make sure you understand how it works. Make sure you understand how to wire it in terms of twisting the wire together, in terms of terminating the, the ends so that you do get your CAN data transmitted through there. All right, but hopefully that's been helpful and uh, we'll see you guys again soon. And we've done the whole series of this. So please feel free to pick and choose whichever subject you like. And if you have any comments or suggestions, or um, please put it down in the comment section below. And you can find us also at uh, Phoenix Engine Management on Facebook. You can fire us a message there if you'd like any more information. But thanks for watching and we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.